Welcome to the Ediprompt demo video. Ediprompt can be used to cue actors and artists in a variety of ways, as well as automate the recording process when using Pro Tools. In this video, we'll demonstrate the different ways that Ediprompt can be used to record ADR, voiceover, and Foley. Take one. Ediprompt can perform a variety of functions. Here we'll demonstrate Ediprompt being run on the same Mac as Pro Tools. Some of the functions shown do not apply if Ediprompt is run on a second Mac, or if it's connected to a digital audio workstation other than Pro Tools. Here is the main Ediprompt window. To start, we'll set where Ediprompt will overlay its visual elements. We'll demonstrate by opening a Pro Tools session with a dummy QuickTime video positioned on the same screen. By clicking the Set Overlay Window button, this grey overlay is displayed. Position this over the top of the QuickTime movie by dragging the overlay and adjust its size by dragging the lower right corner. Alternatively, click the Fit PT Movie link to position the overlay to match the Pro Tools movie window, or click the Fit Screen link to set the size of the overlay to match the size of the current screen. Once the overlay is positioned correctly, double click it to accept. Now let's look at the different visual and audio cues that Ediprompt can generate. These can be enabled from the main tab and can then be set up as required from their individual tabs. When any of the settings are changed, an example of the object is displayed. Here we adjust the font size of the text object. To revert sliders back to the value of their last save, hold down the Option key and click the control. To audition your settings, press the Play Test button. The Prompts tab sets the parameters of the two yellow vertical lines that meet in the middle of the screen. Counters can be set to count up or down, while traditional streamers can be configured here. A punch can be automatically displayed at the end of the streamer by checking this control. The flutter or punch parameters are set up here. Audio beeps can be generated from either the onboard samples or an external audio file, which is selected here. The status tab is used to adjust the settings of the playback and record status of the connected digital audio workstation. This is displayed to the actor or artist so they can automatically see when you are playing or recording. Lastly, the takes tab configures the voice that can be used to announce the take number when recording with the cue list window. Take 12. When the Play Test button is clicked while displaying the main tab, all selected elements are played. To save your settings, click the Save Settings button and enter a name. To reload a particular setting, click the Load Settings button. Note that most buttons have an associated keyboard shortcut which can be viewed from the Ediprompt menus. Now we'll have a look at how these elements can be triggered. Streamers can be triggered from either MIDI notes or Tesla-style SysX MIDI commands. As Pro Tools cannot generate these commands natively, we will first create a MIDI file containing a SysX command to trigger a streamer and 3 by MIDI notes to trigger audio beeps. From the Ediprompt file menu, select New Template MIDI File. This is used to create whatever MIDI triggers you require. Here we will check Streamers and note Q Track 1. Now we can set up the length and colour of the streamer, as well as the number of beeps and duration between each beep. Once everything is set, click OK and save the file. Next we open a record session containing a dummy QuickTime video and a stereo record track. Load the MIDI file by drag and dropping it onto the Pro Tools session below the last track and accept the default MIDI import options. By locating to the start of the session and setting the track display to SysX, we can see the SysX command and 3 by MIDI notes that have been imported. When we play Pro Tools, we see that these MIDI elements trigger Ediprompt to display a white streamer and play three audio beeps. To simplify the process of spotting these elements to our cue points, switch the track's display to region and create a region containing all of the MIDI elements ending at the marker. As we have MIDI commands on two tracks, we can group the tracks to save selecting both tracks each time we copy and paste. Copy the regions to the clipboard and locate Pro Tools to the first cue point. Here we will create a marker, paste our MIDI regions, and spot the out point to the marker. Do this by holding the control and command keys while clicking the region with the grabber. 
Now when we play Pro Tools, the streamer and audio beeps are timed correctly to cue the actor or artist at the cue point. If we play this again and stop during the pre-roll, we see that the streamer continues. In order to stop all visual and audio elements when the digital audio workstation stops, enable the play status feature of Ediprompt. We do this via the Ediprompt preferences on the door MIDI I.O. tab. Here we see the default I.O. settings. The path A port is being used to receive the streamer and audio beep commands. We will enable the play status port by creating a virtual connection. Ports can also be connected via network and hardware connections when Ediprompt is running on a different computer from the digital audio workstation. Press OK and now we see from the MIDI activity display that the Path A and Play status ports are enabled and their associated LEDs will light when MIDI commands are received. When we play Pro Tools now and stop during the pre-roll, the streamer also stops. As an alternative to creating sysx commands to trigger streamers, MIDI notes can be used. To enable this feature, check the trigger prompts, counters, streamers and flutters with MIDI notes preference, and if audio beeps are being generated, be sure to trigger them from a single note. The Ediprompt user guide contains a chart listing note values and the visual elements they trigger. A way to trigger prompts, counters, streamers or audio beeps without having to copy and paste MIDI commands or notes is to use auto cues. We will look at these later in the video. First we'll have a look at how we use the cue list window to display cue lines and automate the recording process within Pro Tools. To use the cue list window and several other features of Ediprompt, we need to connect Ediprompt to Pro Tools as if it were a Huey MIDI controller. To do this, we go back to the Ediprompt preferences and set the controller input and output ports to virtual. Then in the Pro Tools setup menu, we select MIDI, then input devices, make sure that Ediprompt controller output is checked, and now select peripherals from the setup menu and click the MIDI controllers tab. Here we connect Ediprompt to Pro Tools by selecting Huey in the type column. Ediprompt controller output for receive from, and Ediprompt controller input for send to. Then press OK. Now the controller input and output LEDs will light up to show that communication has been established. Ediprompt uses this connection to obtain the play and record status and control certain functions within Pro Tools. Now when we press play or record in Pro Tools, Ediprompt displays this status in its MIDI activity display and the record status overlay if selected. We are now ready to demonstrate the cue list window. Here we have a MIDI file generated by EDIQ that contains a unique MIDI command called text cue. You can see how this file was generated by watching the EDIQ demo video. In the following example, you can use a MIDI file containing text cues, streamer commands, MIDI notes, or a combination of these. Drag and drop this MIDI file onto the Ediprompt main window to display all the cues in the cue list window. Next, drop the same file onto the Pro Tools edit window below the last track accepting the default MIDI import options. In Pro Tools, switch the display of the MIDI tracks to SysX so we can see the MIDI commands. Here we see a marker positioned at each cue point named with the cue number, a SysX command 3 seconds before each marker, and a play status track which is automatically generated by EDIQ. Note that all MIDI tracks automatically route to the correct input paths of Ediprompt, as seen here. In Ediprompt, we have selected to display text, prompts, and play audio beeps for each text cue. Hence, when we press play in Pro Tools, the text cue triggers all of these elements within Ediprompt. Coming back to the cue list window, each row in the list displays the marker number, checkerboard channel, cue number, line text, and duration of each cue. The checkerboard channel shows which of the two tracks the text cue sysx command has been placed on. This helps to know which MIDI track needs to be muted when cues are created in close proximity. When a blue button on a cue list row is clicked, Pro Tools will locate to the selected cue, while clicking a red button instructs Ediprompt to rename one or more record tracks and perform a locate. To set up which tracks are renamed within Pro Tools, click the Record Tracks Update button. Here you can configure up to 12 record tracks and set where in the session the first track is located. The record tracks can be named with the cue number or with the cue number and its line text by checking this option. 
Finally, when more than one track is being named, a suffix needs to be set up so that each track has a unique name. Here we will accept the default A1 to A3 suffix. If you wish to start recording before the cue point, select how many seconds of pre-record is required from the pre-record drop-down menu. Here we will select two seconds. Now when we click the red Rename and Locate button, you can see that the first three audio tracks are named and Pro Tools is located two seconds before the cue point. Pressing F12 to record, we see that the text cues trigger all the visual and audio cues selected in Eddie Prompt and Pro Tools names the recordings with the cue numbers generated in EdiQ. If you need to update the wording of a line, simply double click its text in the cue list window and amend as required. While demonstrating this, let's display a counter instead of the prompts. We'll locate Pro Tools using the blue button in the cue list window and press F12. Notice how the updated text is displayed in the overlay. To reset the line text back to its original state, simply double click the line. If additional cues need to be added during the recording session, insert a new cue in the cue list window at the appropriate location. Here we amend the start of the cue number to the correct scene number and type in the text of the new line. In Pro Tools, select a range where the cue starts and ends on the main MIDI track. Then back on the cue list window, click the green New Cue button. Eddie Prompt will now add a marker, copy the required MIDI command, rename the record tracks, and locate Pro Tools ready for record. Lastly, we'll check the option to speak the take number and press F12. Take one. Eddie Prompt cues the actor and drops into record for the newly created cue. Now let's have a look how we can generate the visual and audio cues automatically with auto cues. Auto cues were designed for recordings where you want to park on a cue point, hit play or record and automatically generate visual and or audio cues timed to the cue point selected. All you need to achieve this is a play status track in your digital audio workstation to trigger Eddie Prompt. Create one of these by selecting New Play Status MIDI File from the Eddie Prompt File menu. Next, save the MIDI file. Here we save it to the desktop and drag it onto the Pro Tools edit window below the last track. Accept the default MIDI import options and we see a new MIDI track has been created containing a note that runs for the duration of the session. Now in the Eddie Prompt preferences, go to the Door MIDI I.O. tab and check Virtual on the Play Status path. Note also the settings on the Overlay Settings tab that come into play when using auto cues. Here we've selected to generate cues with the default duration of two seconds. Lastly, all we need to do is set the Pro Tools pre-roll length to one second longer than the cue duration set in the Eddie Prompt preferences. Here we set it to three seconds. Now we'll create a marker at a cue point and press play. Notice a streamer is automatically generated to end at the marker. This type of cue that is displayed is selected here on the main tab of Eddie Prompt. When using Pro Tools, it is also possible to trigger different visual or audio cues when record is pressed. To achieve this, Eddie Prompt needs to be connected to Pro Tools as a Huey MIDI controller, as seen while demonstrating the cue list window. Now when we press play, a streamer is displayed. And when we press record, a streamer and audio beeps are triggered. Different types of visual or audio cues can be triggered here on the main tab of Eddie Prompt. This demonstrates how auto cues can be used to record voiceover and Foley artists. Now let's have a look at Eddie Prompt hotkeys. The hotkeys setup window is displayed by selecting setup hotkeys from the Eddie Prompt Pro Tools control menu. Hotkeys are used to trap predefined keystroke combinations to initiate either a record or play in Pro Tools, a Pro Tools locate, or to rename one or more record tracks with the name of a selected region. Here we'll demonstrate how hotkeys can be used in combination with the AV Bypass feature so that audio and visual cues are only played when the play or record hotkeys are pressed. This can be used while checking cue points or playing a whole scene when cueing isn't required. First, enable the record and play hotkeys. Different hotkeys can be configured, but here we'll use the defaults. Make sure that the keys being used as hotkeys are not assigned in the OSX keyboard shortcuts. Here we check that F11, F12 and Command Space have been disabled. 
For Snow Leopard, they are configured by default to the Dashboard, Expose Desktop, and Spotlight. Next, enable AV Bypass and click OK. Now we see the AV Bypass display appear on the main window. While in this state, no visual or audio cues are generated by Ediprompt. We'll also update the record status to display preview and record. Now when we press the spacebar on Pro Tools to play, no visual or audio cues are triggered. However, by pressing F11, we can preview a cue. And by pressing F12, we can record. Then we can review the recording by pressing the spacebar in Pro Tools, which enables the AV Bypass feature. The AV Bypass feature can also be used in conjunction with the Cue List window. We can play in Pro Tools at any point and no visual or audio cues are triggered. When we locate to a cue and press F11, the cue is previewed. Then pressing F12, we can record. As you can see, Ediprompt can be set up in a variety of ways depending on your requirements and workflow. To try Ediprompt out for yourself, head to the download page and for more information, see the help menu within each application.